everyone. Today, we are here to talk about the benefits of adopting a healthy living lifestyle. And we have the pleasure of speaking with our guest, Elizabeth Edwards, who is going to show us what it's like to live a healthy living lifestyle. And Elizabeth, welcome. Thank you for joining us all the way from the beautiful and fabulous Montreal. Before we dive in to, to this, I'm just curious, and I'm sure our viewers are curious as well, to get a sense of what, what do you think about healthy living? What are your thoughts about healthy living? What does it mean to you? Longevity, a balance, physically, you know, being able to sustain and to be able to move around, that's important. And I think just the will to just be able to survive. And one of the reasons that we wanted to chat with you, Elizabeth, is because you have a really, you had a really compelling story. I was kind of in awe when I heard your, when I heard your story about healthy living and how it essentially just changed and transformed your life completely. And would love for you to share that with our viewers. So in 2014, I got diagnosed with uterine cancer and I said, no, it's not true. I didn't believe it. But anyway, doctor says that. So I continue. On I had, a, well, 2013, 2014, I had the treatments. It was not the nicest thing. Sitting down, taking the IV in your hands are not pretty. And it has nothing to do with how you eat to get that, nor anything, you know, to that nature. But anyway, went into treatment for about six months, I think. I had them all. X-ray, radiation, the chemo, and I had other radiation that goes into the body. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. Um... It's like I'm reliving it, speaking about it. Um, came out of it, so pretty good though. I'll, I'll tell you the things that are my defects, like a whole from that, is the chemo destroyed the nerves in my right toe. So that's something I still have to this day. Um, I was putting a lot of medications, which I wasn't happy with. So I'm taking something right now that is really good, that works for me. But going through the process of just the cancer itself, you have to adjust. You, you know, some people say, oh, it's cancer, whatever, I'm gonna do whatever. We're gonna die, I'm gonna live, you know, I'm gonna eat this, eat that. You know what I said? I'm not gonna die, I don't have cancer. That's what I said. And I said, I'm gonna make sure that I live right from now on. And you know, when you go into your see, you had a nutritionist and all that. And they will give me certain diets and they'll tell you certain things to eat. And they'll say, oh, but it's okay. You can have this and you can have that. Mm -hmm. And I've read a lot while I was going through that. So you know what I said to myself? I'm going to make a drastic change. I cut the meats out. I cut the fats out. Exercise became like another, you get up, you brush your teeth, you go down to the basement and you work out. If I can't work out, I go to the gym. If I couldn't go to the gym, I went for a walk. Um, really important. We struggled, you know, some people, you know, can't walk or get up, but I was able to get up. One of the things also that I had um, that kind of tried to bomb me is lying down on my back. I couldn't lie. The pain and the nettles that went through my back, I sat up like this sleeping at night because my back could dare not touch anything sitting all lying. That was from the chemo. Um, so once my radiation and every treatment was done, I decided that I was going to really battle and stay healthy and be strong to be able to come back because the chemo is not easy. So it takes a toll on the body. Like I would tell everyone, I started buying my foods at organic stores. I don't drink milk. I had um, oats milk, um, no soy products. I was told not to have that by a nutritionist. Because it's not for everyone. The type of cancer do not need me to use soy. So that's something I take out. One of the dietitian had to mention to me, oh, I drink soy every day. And I started drinking it. And when I went to this podiatrist, he said to me, if they ever tell you about soy, do not take it. I was like, oh my God, I had already intake so many. You know, I was like really furious. But anyway, I stopped having the soy. Because when I read with it, deep, you know, depending on the type of cancer, there is a way that you could rehash that um, that uh, cell. Exercise became my second meal. I joined the gym downtown. Um, McGill, when I was living in La Salle at the time, and I would bust it and go to the gym. There are times when in the West Island, I start going to the gym here, which we have was better because we have the... Um, Buzz, buzz fit, the gym with my husband and myself. And then I, when I can't go to the gym, I walk. When I can't walk, 
or go to the gym or get up in the basement in the morning and would exercise with stretch. Um, so just to let anyone know, I mean, listen, you know, we're going to be sick with something today, but there's always a way of making a difference. Change of foods, really, really important. You know, we want to say, oh, I'm going to eat anything I want to eat. Well, if you want to live a little bit longer, which I want to do, it's to maintain that healthy lifestyle is really about just getting a balance. You know, yes, no, no one say you can't have ice cream, but you won't have ice cream every day. You know, have to be sensitive about it if you want to really survive for your children and grandchildren and your family. And that's all I see. Thank you for being brave and allowing yourself to be vulnerable in front of everyone. We really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you'd mentioned as well is that before you started adopting a healthy living lifestyle, and up until maybe it took you a couple of years, you lost about 20 pounds with eating properly, as you mentioned, exercising, walking. And can you elaborate a little bit upon that? Well, I'll give credit a little bit to, I'm not here to do commercials, but I was, I had joined, um, www weight watchers at the time so i would count my calories and if i wasn't counting my calories i wouldn't like to you i would have been eating more because when i looked at the amount that i was putting in versus if i wasn't i was like oh my god you didn't know that you don't know that you would eat a whole <laughs> roti you would eat a whole and then when you know the calories of what with the potatoes and all that into it you can have half and someone might say you're spoiling it but no so I count my calories. I think I was crazy. I would write them down. I would go into the store. And if I'm buying something, I turn, I have to read everything that's on the package. And I still do it today because I have um, listened to someone speak about if you cannot read or, or comprehend what is in the package, how will you know that it's safe for the body to eat it? So those are some of the things I take into you know, olive oil for cooking instead of just um, canola and, you know, vegetable oil. We think it was the greatest before. No, I don't even want to see that. It might be a little bit expensive, but isn't it worth it? You talk about counting calories, but counting calories, essentially talking about managing your portion size as well. Yeah. And if, if a lot of us do that, I think it would make a, a significant difference as, as well in terms yeah. of managing your weight. And also reading the ingredients on the package. A lot of people don't do that, right? That's also key because there's a lot of things that, that are in a lot of the foods that we eat that we may not even be aware of because we don't read it. So you're, you're so right. How long did it take you to integrate all of that into your day-to-day -day routine? And how long did it take you for it to feel natural? So I would say it maybe took me about six months to feel the difference. Maybe it took me about two years, three years down the line to see that weight loss. But six months at least to feel the change, to feel, whoa, I'm beginning to feel lighter, no longer bloated. You do not have to eat until you're bursting. That's just being greedy. And that's what we think we have to eat until the plate is empty. No, the most thing is those grains to get in. It's not all having, yes, we need a protein, but we can do that with grains. Mm -hmm. I had a lentil piece. I had it in soup. I had it in salads. I had egg white. Didn't eat the yolk. And although they said it had some protein, it was egg whites that I did. Kale, I did a lot, but I've cut down on the kale because so many talks about different things today. So my my thing is broccoli. You know, broccoli has so much to give. So I could go back again and I say grain chicken and turkey was my meats that I would eat. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like in turkey and you know sometimes i'm just, just no meat at all no meat at all because you want to just get that and you feel fresh you feel lighter anyone tried it they will really feel for themselves and i think it took me because i was going to each one so i started losing weight like a five pounds when i go for a review with a five pounds in a month i would lose and it was pretty good how did you keep on track because at the beginning it's not always easy for, for some people, right? It's not for everyone. I was I used to do track and field and play netball. So I'm already had that wanna be physical. So it, it it was nothing new for me, something I was used to. We get up, we have to run, you have to tone. So it was already in my in my psyche. So that was easy. For someone coming in not able to do that, I would say for them it's to do it's say, okay, I'm gonna go walk for 10 minutes today. Or I'm gonna get on the floor and do some stretches. Or I'm gonna dance for 10 minutes. And dancing is a great exercise, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> Whole body from the head right down, mental, physical, everything. You've got a pretty busy schedule, Elizabeth. I, I'm just, I'm just really curious. How do you do it? How do you, how do you keep on track? And you, you're exercising and taking care of the the kids and and all of that. How do you fit that in in your schedule? I'm sure a lot of the our viewers are wondering about that because that's a big issue finding the time to do all of this, right? This is my Bible. So I schedule things for myself and it's open at my desk. And the reason you want to be accountable, my book is always filled. Yes, if you don't have time, you have a phone, you drop it down in the messages. You go through your messages and you see all your notes and you see what you have there. Um, there's times when I go off the grid. Yes, I'm only human. I'm not perfect. Over the weekend, I did nothing. I had the kids at church, we went to church, went to baptism. To them cleaning, I'm cooking, I'm washing, I'm doing everything. I can't wash and clean every day. And it didn't take me just yesterday to just pick that up. It took me a while to just decide, okay, this is not working. But I had to do changes and I made those changes on my agenda also. So essentially having a, coming up with a plan. Organization. When you're not organized, you're everywhere. You can't get anything done. Do you also cook your meals? You have to make a plan again and know what you need. And with that time, and yes, I cook. A lot. Um, you can do chicken like 10 different ways, 20 different ways. Now I'm making it in the house. And they said, but mom, you have chicken every day, but it's never the same. I said, that's the idea. Then it a month, the week ahead. Don't wait until you want to get it to go try season it up. Season and put it away. Buy your foods, cook at home. It's not easy. I'm never saying it's easy. You come home somewhere, you're like, oh, I don't feel like chopping up those peppers. But do you want them spoiled? You want to go get them spoiled and you pay for them or you want to put them away? Because I was told by my doctor when I celebrated five years, congratulations, most patients doesn't make it after that. It's 10 years and it's going to be 11 years next year. It really can knock you off your feet. Mm -hmm. But my God, I'm still here and I'll continue to just, you know, journey and do the best that I can until. Thank you, Elizabeth. We're glad you're here for sure. And uh, it's an inspiration for, for a lot of people, right? So thank you. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview. But I'm, I'm also curious, what, what advice would you, would you give to our viewers? When you get home, get off the TV. Go around the backyard if you have one or up the stairs three, four times and come back. You got to keep physical all the time. We can live a little bit longer. Save our children life also by making them breakfast and lunches. Yes, we're in a busy, fast place world, but we have that that time that we take, like I say, to sit and watch television, we can use for our health. Congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you for having me so much, Mandy. Thank you for, for being here, Elizabeth. And thank you for accepting our invitation to do this interview. And thank you all for watching as well. And remember to drop your comments in the chat and subscribe. We'll see you again soon. Let's take time for living. Let's take time for living.